This conference will now be recorded. All right, as always, everything we're going to be talking about today is for educational purposes only. Nothing is intended as any type of investment advice. So let's talk about SQ. Now, when you talk about an easy trade, I mean, holy crap, it just it does not get much easier than this. So before we even saw the prints that came in today, we know from yesterday, and we went over this in our meeting, okay, about how the SQ was going to end up going up, but we had that selling at 83 and at 83.50 from yesterday, which it had to go up because we kept getting those ask prints to bring it up and up and up. But this morning we got those uh, those bid prints came in at 86. We popped up, we got a trigger back down, and it just didn't. It, did not look back. And one of the best parts about this entire move was it showed nothing but bid prints. It just telling, uh, told us it was going to go down and down and down and down and down and down. And that's exactly what happened. So now we have prints here at 78. Make sure you have them written down. Our selling is sitting there at 78. We're basically just pulling up on pretty much low volume floating, uh, you know, towards this 80 level. Let's take a look right now as we're at 80. Are we getting anything in there? All right, above the S print, so it doesn't really show us much. But now we know it has even more room towards that downside at 78. Now, do I think SQ is not eventually going to come back and get over 100? No, of course I do. I think it will. But as of right this second, we still have more and more new selling that's coming into it. So you know what? Um, we're going to keep it on our afternoon list. It's just the, the biggest thing is just it's going to need you know more consistent volume coming in. And that's the biggest problem that we have on almost every stock that we watch coming in during the afternoon time. Um, but we're sitting at that 80 and you know we're not seeing new buying coming in, which is not a good sign for this thing to continue to pull back up. And like I said, we have those prints down there at that 78 level. All right, so let's take a look at a few things that we had this morning. Now, NBCN just did died off. The second the market opened, we ended up getting sell off. Nothing there for us to really look at. Now, IGC is a really interesting one because we had those prints earlier at six now do i think this gets up above at some point of course i do i mean there's money there at six it still needs to make its money but the market brought the stock down almost immediately upon opening and it wasn't a hard stock to see either i mean we got great prints at that 550 point huge sell-off which we ended up pulling back up above and bringing it back down and ever since then volume has been pretty much garbage you can see it's trading about 12,000 shares a minute, which is just not anything. you know. So I really don't see too much that's gonna be going on in there. We have NIO. Now, NIO is going to stay on our afternoon list as well. We continuously keep getting more prints that come in at that eight level on the ask side that show us that somebody's building a position here. All right, coming back over, you can see beautiful prints. Look at these prints right here at that eight level that came back in, right? Basically, you know, seven minutes before we started our, me our meeting. So expect that pullback to come in. I would not be shocked. The amount of buying I keep seeing coming into this in the consolidated way that it's trading, I would not be shocked for us to get a really nice afternoon trade that comes out of here. Nice trigger up past that eight level and be able to kind of push towards where that double top is or from earlier this morning during the pre-market. It's not done. I mean, this is just too much buying for it to tell us that we're not going to see another move after after it gets that pullback. So NIO is definitely going to be staying there. PYX, another beautiful short coming into this morning. Now on its way back up, we did have a few prints here and there, but nothing too great. We do have selling that's down underneath right around that 35 level. It didn't hit 35, which was a big deal. I, the selling coming into 35, but really would have liked to see some more sell prints there. But we do have prints at 36 on the sell side, as well as 35.50. Um, as we can see, you know, coming into these prints, you know, 37, you have one bid print. And remember, the orders are very, very thin. So one bid print is actually going to affect this stock more than if five bid prints came into a stock like AMD. We talked a lot about that during our uh, during our uh, workshop. Mongovering IMPV jumped 12 dollars today after being bought. Sure, I'll look at that in a second. Um, and then we have NBEV, which was on our side list. It's actually not looking too bad, to be completely honest. I mean, you know, nothing too great either. But at the same time, I mean, we're, you know, you're getting you know, some decent movement for such a cheap stock. And remember, we know there's buying back up here. You know, th we've seen this stock move a whole lot. For, so for it to get back up above that eight, it's not going to, which wouldn't take more than a day. Um, do I really see much there right now? No, I'm going to keep my eyes on them. IGC and NBEV, I, you know, I have as... Uh, on my scanners, I'm going to continuously look at them. Um, just nothing really, no variables there for me to be watching for this afternoon. And then ACRX. Now, this was just a beautiful, beautiful move. I mean, we got those prints at three that we knew of. Um, it kind of just, you know, was fading around. You know, we got beautiful prints above the three level. So it was like a 320 and 325 that pushed it all the way up. And now we have prints at 350 on that ask side that we saw coming in before. Biggest problem here is it's just, it's, it's consolidated. It's not doing anything. 
Um, but you know, one of the, the big variables that I really do like about it is the fact that it's sitting within that consolidation on really low volume and it's still holding. When we see the cheaper stocks, do something like that um, it usually gives us an indication that people are not looking for it to go down yet and we know we have the buying above i'm going to put it on our side list just because of how crappy it's trading but it's certainly something that we should not take our eyes off especially with these you know these cheaper stocks yes that 350 great phenomenal buy okay and even as we came back up above that first time at about 10 30 we saw some really good buying up there as well so it's just kind of sitting around, but it certainly shows more opportunity towards that upside. So then the only other things that we really have out there that we're looking at, so we have the AR, ACRX, which we know, we know SQ, um, INO actually we've already went over, and that's pretty much what I see. I don't see too much else out there that I care, you know, really care anything about. Um, IMPV, let's take a look. So if they were bought out, it's more than likely, yeah. So when you see a stock like this, you see how IMPV, when you see this chart, this is, again, this is almost, uh, you know, um, one ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to it's a buyout. And it just, it's not going to do anything. There's just, you know, if you're not in it and the move, there's nothing there for you to trade because it just ends up kind of moving, you know, straight to the side and not doing anything whatsoever. So unfortunately, absolutely nothing there that I would even think about looking to trade. And yes, we can absolutely talk about Facebook. So Facebook keeps giving us more prints at 155. The amount of times it's printed at 155 and the amount that's at 155. No, I do not think that $1 to 154 is enough to sort of show that this thing is done yet. And if you look, this is something I love to see. When you see a congestion of print lines like this, you see how I basically you can't even read them. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's like six or seven or eight. I can't even read them all. But when you see a congestion like that, that basically tells us that we're going to end up seeing a very big movement away from those prints. And the way that you go about it is you're going to go you know, bullish above the highest print line, bearish below the lowest. And what this is telling us is we just keep getting those that selling that comes in, those bid prints. Or telling us, yeah, is it going to pull back up a little bit? Of course it is. But overall, we're definitely looking for a bigger move um, towards that downside. And you know what? I mean, I'm not going to, there's not enough there to put 150 as my price target yet. Um, but 150 would be a very logical number. Facebook can, you know, on average moves $4 in a day. So for it to go from 155 to 150, is not a hard thing whatsoever. But this congestion of print lines and the prints that we keep getting at 155 on that bid side show me a whole lot in where I'm going to be expecting this thing to go. And it's still, I see nothing that shows me that this stock wants to go back up yet. All right. Anything else out there that I missed? Uh, even the highest volume, I mean, it just sucks. There's just not much at all. Most things just kind of sitting in consolidation and not really doing doing much at all. AMD was also an absolutely phenomenal trade this morning. Um, you know, beautiful. We knew we had a huge selling at that 26 level. We knew we had a huge selling at the 27 level and it just continued down. Now it didn't touch 25, which tells us if you get a trigger back up, doesn't touch 25, we're going to get a short term move towards that upside. But the, basically a dollar is not enough for the amount of selling that we saw coming in at that 26. Um, MU, yes, MU I put out there before, had some really good prints at 42 and it never pulled back from them. So even though it looks great right this second, there's not really much that I, I personally would do with it. And, you know, until, I mean, at the same time, until less a short, we get a trigger back down towards that downside and we end up satisfying those prints that came in at 42. Some really, a really nice burst. I mean, it had to be like 10, 12 prints that came at that 42 on the ass. So I'm going to be expecting this to come back down before we would see it and making any type more of a move towards that upside. All right, guys. So, uh, hey, Rich, any thoughts on the other tech stocks? Microsoft, PayPal dropping along with the QQQ. Okay, so the uh, QQQ is an ETF. I do not follow ETFs. And the reason behind that is that they, they're based so much on news and they can be affected so much by news. The prints work exactly the same, but then news comes out and changes everything else. I don't really care when a stock is following any index because, in my opinion, indexes don't really mean much. Um, but at the same time, it's I'm seeing a lot, and I'm going to go bid out based off prints. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use an ETF to to kind of give you an idea of something else but at the same time an ETF can be moving down and you can have great buying in it and it's just pulling back from there so it still comes directly to the print one thing I can tell you though is that I have been seeing a lot of selling coming into stocks like Apple coming into stocks like SQ um, PayPal PayPal not so much PayPal doesn't really trade as much so it looks like people are kind of dumping a little bit um, so I wouldn't be shocked to see these techs continue on their way down for a little bit um, based off of the things that I've seen, you know, I'm not following every single tech. I mean, I don't look at Microsoft pretty much any day. It's just not really a great day trade most of the time. Um, so I don't really follow that. But I, uh, like I said, in the techs, I have been seeing a bunch of selling that's been coming into it. So I would not be shocked to consider uh, to see those continue happening. 
Um, I never saw any great selling prints. Uh, I'm like SQ. All right. All right, guys. So I'll talk to everyone in the chat room and happy trading.